Today's review was sponsored by one of my favorite sponsors, Sadie, because I'm pet-sitting her this weekend, and uh, we're talking about a killer dog movie, so here she is. Don't worry about her, it's been a long day and she's very tired. Watch it, Alan, I'm shooting. The Pack, 1977. How's it going, everybody? Um, as you can see, I'm not in my typical location. I'm dog-sitting Sadie this week, and uh, she's asleep, as you just saw. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not in my typical location. I apologize if the lighting seems off and if the audio is off. This is just the... Uh, best location for filming, and uh, I do apologize if I seem a little off in this uh, video. I've had a bit of a stomach bug for the past few days, so uh, I might seem a little loopy, uh, but what else is new, right? But on with that, uh, let's uh, talk about The Pack, 1977. I first watched this movie years ago. It was a rental on VHS, uh, yes, nostalgia. I remembered liking it enough, so last year I had the urge to rewatch it, and after seeing it again, I loved it. It's become one of my favorite Animal Attack movies. I love Animal Attack flicks. They're comfort food for me. When I get home after a long day of work or I'm feeling sick and I just want to sit back and watch a movie, Animal Attack flicks work for me. Sam, where are you? What really made me want to talk about this movie is watching the 2015 version, which is not a remake, it just so happens to be another movie about killer dogs. I talked about that one last week, but long story short, the 2015 version committed the biggest issue I have with movies. Not taking full advantage of your idea. Not really using your idea in your movie. So I wanted to talk about both films, and today we're looking at the 1977 version, which is a very good movie. The movie was directed by Robert Klaus, the man who directed Enter the Dragon. Much like the 2015 version, this film has a very simple plot. The movie takes place on a small island town called Seal Island. This place is a tourist hotspot during the summer. People come to the island to fish and enjoy simple island living. Many of the tourists adopt dogs for the summer, and then they abandon their dogs on the island once the summer is over, because I guess to these people, dogs are nothing more than toys. You'll be all right. Sure, somebody will come and take you in. Okay. As a result, these dogs become feral and start hunting the local wildlife on the island. And soon, they start attacking the population on the island. It's up to Jerry, a local marine biologist played by Joe Don Baker, to try and protect the townsfolk from this new pack of wild dogs. The shotgun. This movie touches on a very sad reality. There are people out there who adopt dogs from shelters and then abandon them when they don't want to take care of them anymore. And I'm not talking about people who end up in bad situations and have no choice but to give up their dogs. I'm talking people who adopt dogs and then decide, you know what, I don't want this dog anymore. It's a sad thing that happens, but it happens. I'm a big supporter of adopting homeless pets. Many of the dogs I take care of were rescue dogs, and it's important to acknowledge things like this. If you're going to adopt an animal, it's a commitment. Do not adopt a dog if you do not plan on loving and caring for that dog for its whole life. They will be loyal to you. You should be loyal to them. I appreciate how this movie acknowledges that even though these dogs are a threat and they need to be dealt with, 
it's not really their fault. It's the people who abandoned them on this island to survive on their own. Sometimes tourists, they deliberately leave them behind. They pick them up the pound, they bring them over to play with for the summer, and then they leave them. But they'd starve. That's right. Okay, now I'll get off this soapbox and we'll get on with the video. The pack from 1977 takes full advantage of its idea. This is a movie about wild dogs, and these dogs are vicious. While the 2015 version had so many scenes that built up to nothing, the pack from 1977 has a lot of good suspenseful scenes involving the pack. The movie does a good job at making these dogs seem threatening, especially the lead dog, played by a dog named Josh. A few blood splotches here and there and some dirty fur, and it makes this dog look intimidating. You gotta hand it to the dog trainer of this flick, Carl Lewis Miller. It must have been hard to wrangle all of these dogs. There are some intense scenes in here. There's not a high body count in this movie, but it makes up for that with plenty of suspense. There's one scene where a woman is in her car trying to get away from the pack, and these dogs are tearing away at the car trying to get to her. And you believe these dogs want to rip this woman apart. <laughs> This is why I was so frustrated with the 2015 version. So many scenes where the danger never felt dangerous. In this movie, the danger is everywhere. The dog attack scenes get very intense. Breaking glass, growling, teeth, it's good stuff. The final attack in the climax is very good. <laughs> I always get a kick out of dog attack scenes in movies because what are the dogs thinking? They don't know they're in a movie. They're supposed to be intimidating, but what's going through their minds? Like in the movie Cujo, the filmmakers had to make sure to not get the dog's tail in any of the shots because his tail was wagging happily. In the pack, there are moments where the characters are trying to fight off the dogs, and the dogs are grabbing onto their weapons, and I'm wondering if the dogs are thinking, YAY, TUG OF WAR! <laughs> Getting that out of my head, the attack scenes are brutal. Not gory, but vicious. It's odd because when this movie originally came out, it had a PG rating, 1970s PG, but the studio insisted that the MPAA re-rate the movie as an R. This is not an R-rated movie. But the attack scenes are still good. Our brains are spinning with the thought of, what are the victims feeling? These people are getting torn apart by these dogs. And there are a few kills that are more suggested, but they're just as effective as the on-screen kills. Because we're imagining what the victim went through. The characters bring this movie together. There is one character who is an asshole, but the majority of the characters are quirky and likable. There are little details given to us in conversation, which helps us get more attached to these people, which makes it more effective when they're in danger. Well, there's old McManamy trying to hook up his dog. Sure depends on that dog. I also appreciate the dynamic between Jerry and his family. Jerry has a son from a previous relationship, and he's involved with a woman named Millie, who also has a son from a previous relationship. I've seen a lot of horror movies where step-parents are involved, and the kids are at odds with the new parents. They're constantly butting heads, they're bickering back and forth, they don't really get along with each other. But that's not the case here. This family gets along fine. The step-parents get along with the new kids, and the new kids get along with the step-parents. We've been finding out about the sex life of things. Hmm? Yeah, well, the boys have been asking some rather blunt questions, so I thought that it best that we start with animals. 
You wouldn't believe how turtles do it, Dad. You'd be surprised what I believe. It's nice to have a movie that ignores that cliché. It's not the biggest deal, I know, but I appreciate it. There's more important things to worry about here, like getting your face ripped off by a dog. <laughs> The Pack from 1977 is a good animal attack flick. It's got some good dog attacks, plenty of suspense, likable characters. It's a fun movie. There's not much else to say other than that. If you're a fan of the genre, this one's worth a watch. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of four. I thought it was higher, but it's definitely said that one of the victims is alive. The kills are mostly dog attacks, except for one fall to the death. Most of the characters are likable, which makes the movie more intense when they're in danger. There's a good amount of suspense here. The attack scenes get your heart rate up. Speaking of which, the dog attack scenes are intense. It feels like these dogs want to rip these people apart. The film has a good pace. You don't have to wait long for the next dog attack. And the climax is good and thrilling. I'm giving this a 4.3 out of 5. It's a solid animal attack flick. For fans of the genre, it's a good time. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what your comfort genre is. The kind of movies you like to watch after a busy day. This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. Now I want to show you this video that I took yesterday, where I had to fight off a pack of vicious dogs. Oh, vicious animals. Oh, God. Oh, we're under attack. Oh, we're under attack. Oh, my God. Look at these vicious beasts. Oh, my God. They're so vicious. Oh, my God. Oh, the horror. Oh, I am in fear of my life. Oh, no. Oh, no.